Hello students, let us continue the previous lecture which is on the symptoms of performance anxiety and I narrated some of the mental issues, health issues in which one of the very important issue is panic. Panic is a type of anxiety that involves sudden and intense feeling of fear. So, when a person experiences a panic attack, they may experience racing heartbeat, chest pain, trembling, sweating, sense of impending doom, feeling out of control or feeling as if they are dying. So, panic attacks are a symptom of anxiety disorder known as panic disorder. These are the symptoms because we are discussing the symptoms of a stage fear or performance anxiety. People with this condition worry that they will have a panic attack in the future. So, they often avoid places or situations where they think they might experience feelings of panic. Common symptoms of performance anxiety include trembling, a stomach upset, nausea, shortness of breath and an increased number of mistakes while performing like a stammering, uttering. Escape behavior such as finding an excuse to avoid the task of performance may also occur. Sometimes various types of anxiety like it includes musical performance anxiety, personal or sexual performance anxiety, speech anxiety, test anxiety. What does performance anxiety feel like? So, if you experience this fear, the following statements I am going to read out that is most probably sound very familiar. Like questionnaires with a statement similar to these have been used by researchers to examine the thoughts, feelings experienced by people with musical performance anxiety. The harder I work to prepare for a concert or for a performance, the more likely it seems that I will make a mistake. This is the general perception. And these are the question here. I worry about a negative reaction from the audience. That is the kind of fear or obsession. I have a sense of dread before performances. I worry about performing weeks or months in advance. I never know the night of performance, whether or not I will do well. There are times during performances when I wonder if I will make it through. So, problematic thinking is often at the root of musical or stage performance anxiety. Thoughts such as my performance needs to be perfect. You know, obsession with perfection, perfect or I am a complete failure or I had a good performance tonight, but I must have just been lucky, create and maintain anxiety. So, there are certain, you know, spaces where you feel very blurry or very confused like black or white thinking. If my performance is not perfect, I am a failure. Over generalization, I had a bad performance tonight. I have always been a bad performer and always will be means you are cursing yourself, you are negative for yourself. Others are not saying, but you are saying you are cursing yourself, you are underestimating yourself. Like mental filter, everyone must have noticed how I messed up in the middle. It does not matter that the rest was ok. My mistake ruined the performance. Suppose 30 minutes you have to perform or you performed and suppose 2 minutes it was wrong, but rest of the 28 minutes you will think of that all went bad. Disqualifying the positive, I had a good performance tonight. 
but I must have just been lucky. Jumping to conclusion, the audience was really quiet tonight. They must not have liked my performance. So why does our heart beat rate rise when we get frightened? Our body responds to a stress, worry, anxiety, fear and excitement by activating the fight or flight system. At chemical level, our body releases a series of hormones that makes us hyper alert, focused and energized. And this chemical cascade causes increased heart rate, respiratory rate and perspiration. So from an evolutionary standpoint, this is a system we needed in place for survival. When a danger is encountered, our brain just sends signals to our entire body warning us that we need to leave the life threatening situation. The hormones then create adrenaline that will keep us awake and alive while we are fighting or fleeing. Our cells too contribute by keeping everything working and pumping and so that adrenaline can pump through our blood. While the adrenaline is pumping through our blood, so are the fat and sugar. That fat and sugar make our bronchi open wider causing heartbeat and breathing rate to accelerate. That is why our heart beats faster when we get frightened. Normally heart rate control is balanced when the two circuits of the autonomic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system that is SNS is often referred to as our fight or flight system. The parasympathetic nervous system PSNS is its counterpart and can be termed as the rest and digest system. Together, the PSNS and SNS work in all areas of the body to help us act, react, recover and survive. So see, these are the peculiar situation, physical and mental fatigue. But these two are different again, but they often occur together. Repeated physical exhaustion can lead to mental fatigue over time. Poor sleep, particularly when it occurs for a long time, can also lead to fatigue. An official recommend that the adults get 7 to 8 hours trusted source of sleep each night. According to some research, However, around 1 in 3 people trusted source in the United States say that they do not get enough sleep. So eating a healthful diet, getting regular physical activity can help to reduce fatigue for many people treating the underlying cause of fatigue whether this is poor sleep or a health condition also helps. So there are two main types of fatigue physical and mental. A person with physical fatigue may find it physically hard to do the things they usually do such as climbing the stairs, symptoms include muscle weakness and diagnosis may involve completing a strength test. With mental fatigue, a person may find it harder to concentrate on things and stay focused. 
they may feel sleepy or have difficulty staying awake while working. So, some chronic medical condition can cause the muscles to wear out more quickly or cause a person to feel fatigued. In other cases, an infection may cause the muscle to falter. So, if a person has a sudden severe onset of muscle weakness, they should talk to a doctor. And some examples that this occurs when a person's adrenal glands do not produce enough of the hormones cortisol and aldosterone. In addition to muscle weakness, other common symptoms of you know such kind of disease include chronic fatigue, weight loss, loss of appetite and the stomach pain all the time in anxiety and that will force you not to eat, fatigueness, less sleep therefore weight loss. Anemia is also one of the regions especially in India to be fatigued and to get nervous. And as I said that we have students, people from various strata of society, well this may be one of the reasons. Anemia occurs when a person's hemoglobin levels are low, often due to iron deficiency. And this leads to the symptom like dizziness, shortness of breath, headache, cold hands and feet that is also a symptom of nervousness and irregular heartbeat. Now this diagnosis refers to unexplained fatigue. There is no explanation for the fatigue or fatigue that a doctor cannot relate to a medical condition. Another name for it is myelagic encephalomyelitis. This is the medical name. People with chronic fatigue syndrome experience severe tiredness and sleep problem. Other symptoms include muscle weakness, pain, dizziness and problems concentrating. Now, there is a very important fluid called electrolyte. It happens or it takes place in our body the lack of it due to loose motions and excessive sweating. So, electrolyte help ensure that the muscles, nerves, heart and brain all function correctly. Having altered levels of electrolytes such as calcium, potassium, sodium and magnesium can cause muscle weakness. So, examples are of electrolyte disorders include hypokalemia or hyperkalemic periodic paralysis. See, as we call a panic attack on the stage, this may create paralytic also if it is very high order risk factors for an electrolyte imbalance can be loss of fluids through sweating, vomiting and loose motion. Chemotherapy, a poor diet, taking antibiotics unnecessary. Fibromyalgia, what is fibromyalgia? Fibromyalgia is a chronic condition that causes muscle pain and weakness in addition to other symptoms. See health is the most important aspect when you give exam, when you give performance. Like constant fatigue, always fatigued and that affects your memory. That also create mood changes, hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism or an underactive thyroid can cause muscle weakness and cramping. And these symptoms may get worse with exercise and physical activity. So, when you need to give a stage performance, you should take care of 
all these things, your health issues, your food level, quality of food, your rest, everything. Now, this thyroidism can cause weight gain, feeling cold, dry skin and hair, fatigue, irregular or heavy menstrual periods, a slow heart rate, joint and muscle pain, depression or mood disorder, also fertility problem. And a doctor can often diagnose this and other thyroid conditions with the blood test. Sleep disorder, even before exam, that is also a kind of performance, a student gets disturbed. Sleep disorder such as narcolepsy and insomnia can result in daytime muscle weakness and fatigue. A person who needs to stay in bed due to a medical condition may also experience muscle weakness. This results from not using the muscle as regular as usual. A person may also be at risk of sleep problem. That is why it is always advisable to the student go for yoga, go for work, go for sports that also support the mental health. And when we talk of all these things, you know, neurological conditions are also very important to discuss. Some conditions that affect the nervous system can cause muscle weakness. These conditions are often chronic and affect the way that a person's nerves transmit messages to their muscles. And some examples are like cervical spandulosis. Yes, if you have pain in your body, you are feeling uneasy, you cannot give the best performance. What is cervical spandulosis is related changes to the cushioning, a spinal disc in the neck can cause cervical spandulosis. And this puts extra pressure on nerve resulting in muscle weakness. So, neurological conditions are often progressive. That is to say, with the age, with the passage of time, it goes up and up, which means that they get worse over time. And some of these conditions also go through a stages of remission when symptoms lessen or even disappear before flaring up again. So, some people experience muscle weakness as a result of medicine they take. So, you need to look out, search where you are lacking. If you have, you know, a spine problem or a spondylitis, you cannot speak with loud sound because it will create or cause pain in your muscle. Anyone experiencing muscle weakness as a side effect should speak to a doctor before stopping their medication. So, several things are there, you know, uh, types of medication that can help a person to overcome of such problem. So, a stage fright can be devastating both professionally and personally, but it is not considered a full blown phobia and this is again your mindset. And I would again say whether you ruin your life or to recover your life. However, an extreme fear of public speaking is a phobia called glossophobia. Glossophobia, I discussed remember with the phobia. Glossophobia is a subset of social phobia or the fear of social situations where one is being watched or judged by other, you know followed by sweating. It happens for pretty much everyone. It may not always feel 
all that pleasant, but it is natural response to rising body temperature. It also happens either the rising temperature and cool. When the weather heats up or when you exert yourself during physical activity, your body produces sweat to help you stay cool. So, in short, sweat serves you know a pretty important purpose when you talk of anxiety. Sometimes though you might find yourself sweating when your body does not need to cool off. Sweating commonly happens as a response to fear or stress which is why you might notice increased sweating as a physical symptom of anxiety. And like typical sweat, anxiety can appear all over your body, but mostly it is on face and your palm, you know, soles of your feet, armpit. And of course, worrying about sweating too much can also contribute to feeling of anxiety. Not to mention a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you sweat a lot when facing a stress, you might begin to worry about sweating in front of other people. But that very concern might lead you to break out in a sweat. So, a sweaty face and palms can feel pretty uncomfortable. But an anxiety sweating can also contribute to emotional distress. Not only can frequent sweating complicate your daily routine, but it can also diminish your confidence. You might begin to avoid social situations or anything that might prompt a sweat response. And in time, anxiety, sweating could trigger feelings of loneliness, even depression. So, you need to keep yourself updating, keep reading to learn more about why anxiety, sweating happens. Plus, get a few tips to manage, try to prevent it and you talk to those who are having the same symptom. Headache is also one of the symptoms, anxiety headache happen along with feeling of anxiety. Having a headache may make you anxious or a headache can be a physical symptom of your anxiety. Doctors believe the two can be linked, but they do not understand exactly how. It may have to do with how the brain works, amygdala. The cells in your brain that control mood, sleep, pain use a chemical called serotonin to send message to each other. When people get migraines, these cells get much more active than normal. That changes your serotonin level which may lead to anxiety. That is why I said that health issues are also very important to be a perfect stage performer. And as doctors learn more about how headaches and anxiety affect each other, they can offer better treatments for both. So, make sure to tell your doctor or psychotherapist or any medical practitioner about both condition so you can get the care you need. Now, the question is that does anxiety cause headache or is it the other way around? So, headaches are a common symptoms of different types of anxiety like generalized anxiety disorder I discussed earlier which is in short called GAD. That is a condition where you constantly worry and find it really hard to control your anxiety. So, headaches are one of the signs doctor, medical practitioner look for when they check for GAD. 
often though it is not clear how to tease apart cause and effect when it comes to anxiety and headaches. It may be that if you are someone who is more likely to get one of those problems, your chances go up that you will get the other. Like some folks have a history of you know migraines before they have GAD or other anxiety issues. Others have anxiety first and develop migraine later. People with migraines are more likely to have anxiety and depression when you have all three it usually start with anxiety then migraine kicks and then depression shows up. So people who do not typically get as many headaches anxiety increases the odds of getting them more often. Things that may contribute to anxiety headache can be tension headache. Doctors do not have a separate name for a stress or anxiety headache. But the most common type of headaches you know all have a link to anxiety. So, tension headache almost everyone gets one at some point when you hear people say they have headache it is usually this kind typically they are not too painful. Tension does not mean a stress in this case but refers to how the headache feels which may be like a tight band around your head and it can be triggered by anxiety but it is not clear why this happens. Migraines, these are more severe headaches that can cause painful pounding or throbbing. They can last for hours or even days. So, besides pain, migraines can also make you vomit and very uncomfortable, feel sensitive to light and noise. They are very common in people who have anxiety disorder. Cluster headache, these are called cluster headache because of how they happen. You might get them a few time a day for a few weeks or month and then they just go away. They may not come back for months or year. So, people with cluster headaches are more likely to have anxiety typically in the months of downtime between bouts of headaches. Doctors are not sure how cluster headaches and anxiety are connected or which one causes the other. Now, in such cases anxiety headache your pain and other signs may differ depending on which type of anxiety headache you have. Tension headache, mild or moderate pain or either side of head. Pain can last hours or day. Headache does not get worse with physical activity. So, migraine headache, sharp and intense throbbing pain often happens with nausea and sensitivity to light. Pain may be just on one side and may be focused on the eye, the back of the head and other areas. Headache can last a day or longer. These are very extremely painful in which watery eye, runny nose, sweaty face. So, it is a chronic disease that occurs with varying frequency and result in varying levels of disability. So, reliance on a purely biomedical model of headache does not account for all aspects of headache and associated disability because it as I said it differs from person to person. Now, with this I would like to conclude my discussion which enlightened the symptoms of anxiety performance anxiety. And why did I elaborate all these points in detail some of the medical issue also that you know yourself. Try to know your health issue also that is already there with you even before the stage anxiety and when you 
come to the stage for performance, it aggravates more. So, take care of this, know more about it, talk people about this, consult doctor to be a perfect performer. With this, I conclude my discussion. Let us meet in other lecture with other vibrant useful topic related to countering stage fright. Thank you very much.